in chapter 7.3, we talk about a very different way of slicing right the, uh, instead of washers or disks. Uh, let's give a demonstration by looking at this cake pan. The shape of this is called a bunt pan. So here's a question. Can you write a nice math formula that describes the shape of this? And then we'll use that to find the volume of it. The volume of what you would fill with batter, not just the volume of the aluminum. Okay? So how, think about how you could show this in maybe two dimensions, what would a cr good cross section be? So one way to think of it is to say, um, I'm going to imagine holding it like this and take a cross section right down the middle and I'd get something like this and I'm rotating this around the y-axis. Does that seem like a reasonable thing? Uh, when I do this in an uh, in-person class, people complain, well, it's got all these wrinkles to it. How are we going to model those? And I would say, forget about the wrinkles. Would you like to start life simple or start life complicated in uh, doing a calculus problem? Let's start simple, and the wrinkles are probably not going to make very much of a difference to the overall volume. We're just going to be using approximate measurements anyway. So yeah, let's just pretend it's a smooth uh, surface without the wrinkles. So what's the next step here? Um, it might be nice to know how big these various things are. Like, are we talking three meters, three millimeters? So I've actually measured it. Uh, I do have my ruler here, see? Uh, and this inner radius is about two centimeters. And from the origin out to here is about 12.5 centimeters. Any other measurements you think we will need? It turns out up to here is about eight centimeters. So now a good question is, can you come up with a formula that describes this curve using those facts? What kind of fundamental shape would you use? Um, so let's think about writing a formula for that curve. We're actually kind of here doing the opposite of what the engineer was doing when designing this, right? They would have maybe come up with a basic curve and uh, then told the computer CAD program to rotate it around and compute the volume. Well, someone's got to program the computer to compute the volume of rotated around things, right? So right now that's what we're practicing. Um, when I've done this in class, people have suggested uh, maybe a, a bump of a sine wave. It seems reasonable. Um, someone once suggested a negative hyperbolic cosine, which could be fun, I guess. Um, I would maybe go with a parabola. Um, that seems like a good first approximation. Um, so what would a good parabola formula be here? Um, let's see, someone once suggested f of x equals, well, they started with x squared. Seems reasonable, but that's a right side up parabola. We want an upside down parabola. So they said, hey, let's put a minus on it. Sounds reasonable. And then they said, oh, that would be focused down here, um, but we want it to be shifted up. So it's so the peak of the parabola is at eight vertically. So they said plus eight. What do you think of that? Any improvements we can make or any way that this doesn't model current reality? Well, that would be a parabola centered on the y-axis, but we want it centered over here. Where would it be centered? Well, what's halfway between two centimeters and 12.5 would be 7.25. So if I did two plus 12.5 over two, I'd get 7.25. So I actually want it to be centered at 7.25. So how can I, um, how can I get it centered? Um, well, I could say x minus 7.25. That way, what was 7.25 now acts like 0, because you're subtracting 7.25 from it. So I could try squaring that and adding 8, throwing a minus on there. And that's pretty good. 
but maybe we'll go try that in Desmos. Okay, here we are in Desmos. I typed in some points that I want the curve to go through. Uh, the point here, the point here, and the peak point here. And I typed in the formula we had so far. Uh, so that was pretty good, but it's not going through, and it, so it's hitting its vertex there, but it's not going through these points. You might say we need to make the parabola wider, which is a reasonable way of thinking about it. Another way to say it is that we need to make the parabola not as tall, still going through that vertex point, but kind of squishing the rest of it. So that's thinking about putting a vertical multiplier, which I would actually put here. And then I know I'm not going to need this to be negative. And even at one, the parabola is too tall. So I'm going to restrict the range to zero and one. So I'm making the parabola not as tall. And what do you think? 0.29 looks pretty good. Now you're probably saying, wait, I know algebra. Uh, you could probably solve this to get the k value you need exactly without kind of messing with the slider. Like the 0.29 is probably not exact. But those measurements weren't all that exact anyway, the 2 centimeters and the 12.5 and the 8. Um, and there were all those wrinkles already um, that we're ignoring. So I think saying 0.29 is good enough, you know, it's probably accurate to like 1%, 5%. So we'll just go with that. Another fun thing we can do is um, try this in uh, with a regression. We can say, give me a model of y1 using something like uh, a times x1 squared plus b times x1 plus c. And it comes up with the parameters a, b, and c that when you put them in this formula for this table, you get as close as possible to these y values. And it looks like a is negative 0.29. We already have the negative here. So 0.29 here, 0.290249, close enough. Let's just use 0.29. You can do a similar regression in Excel, but it won't be in this. Um, uh, actually, uh, look, the b and the c here are for a parabola in this form rather than in kind of here's the vertex, here's the vertical shift form. And that's what Excel would give you as well. It would give you a parabola if you did a parabola fit in this form rather than that form. But this form's a little bit nicer, I think. All right, let's go back to paper and pencil. All right, so let's just record that we went to Desmos. We made a little table. Um, we had what? Uh, 2 comma 0, 12.5 comma 0, and 7.25 and 8. Um, and we did a polynomial fit. Um, or we did a slider and got negative 0 0.29 x minus 7.25 squared plus 8. So let's think about what to do next. Let's redraw our shape now that we have a formula for it. So how should we slice up this shape? Well, it seems to have a hollow middle, so I'm thinking more washers than disks. Um, so we could draw a washer slice like that and spin it around. like that. Looking good so far. Um, what would the volume be at this point? Let's write the integral for it uh, without, uh, without using the formula necessarily. So we're spinning it around the y-axis, so we'd integrate with respect to y. So we'd say integral y equals 0 to y equals 8 pi times, and what was our formula for our volume with washers? It was the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared. So the outer radius at this y value squared minus the inner radius at this y value squared dy. So that's a perfectly good integral to write. 
Um, can I just plug f of x in here? Uh, that's my f of x. Think about well, how that will work. Well, f of x gives you the height at any particular x value. We want the radius, the x value, at any particular height. So if we need to invert something, what's uh, to go backwards, that's inverting, right? So that's like the inverse function at a particular y value. How would, and we did that on in the previous video, uh, but it was a fairly simple function. Doing it with this function, yeah, you could do it, but it's not going to be pretty. Um, if the quadratic was in a yuckier form, you'd even need the quadratic formula to do it, which I'm pretty sure we don't want to do. Um, so if we had uh, ax squared plus bx plus c, we'd need the quadratic formula to determine those intersections. Um, uh, when it's in this form, it's not so bad to solve, but still, let, let's think of another way. And that will be our next video.